Chapter 20 The situation was simple. I wanted the baby. Scott didn't. He insisted he had radiation poisoning and any child of his would be born with radioactive poisoning. God, I wish I was making this shit up. Within a week after graduation, he had me at an abortion clinic. I begged him. I pleaded with him to let me keep it. He was adamant that it was born deformed. He drove me to New Jersey where anti-abortionists shoved papers in my face without, without preserving life. I wanted to scream, I agree with you! He's making me do it! I went inside. I was barely 18, gorgeous and fucking smart. Every nurse that greeted me let me know that. I'm not sure why they all insisted on reminding me. I viewed my looks as a curse and the root cause to my problems with males. I hated my looks. In the end, it didn't matter. I was escorted into a room with a bunch of women as miserable looking as I, as I, while the nurse described exactly how the doctor would kill my baby. I looked at the faces of the other mothers. Mothers. I wasn't sure the stories of the, of the girls. I didn't know how they came to be there. I just knew that I was forced to be there. I broke. I sobbed. The nurse scolded me for crying. None of us woke up wanting to be here today, she said. No one wanted this. You're being selfish. I'm sorry, I muttered. If you don't want to be here, maybe you should talk to the father. I walked out to the car where he waited. He was on the phone. Are they done? Scott asked. Don't make me do this, I said. I can't do this. You have to, he said. The baby will die. It's deformed. I don't want to. Please, don't make me do this. Elizabeth, you can't ask this child to be born like this. It's cruel. It isn't fair to you or the baby. I nodded, but didn't trust myself to speak. Okay, he said. Crying, I walked back in. The anti-abortionist shoved another pamphlet in my face. Abortion is murder, she said as I re-entered the clinic. Okay, I said to the nurse. Let's do this. I woke. The sobbing was soft, but it was everywhere. Behind me, around me, beside me. I opened my eyes. It seemed like forever in the time it took to open my eyes. The light slowly found me, and sitting at my head, a woman cried softly into a tissue. Why are you crying? I asked. I took her hand. Please don't cry. I smiled gently. You'll be all right. Everything will be all right now. She smiled back and squeezed my hand, still stop sobbing into her tissue. You're okay, I said. Everything will be okay. You're all right. Elizabeth? A nurse waddled over to me. You awake, honey? I looked around the room where half a dozen women cried into their tissues. Why are they crying? I said, and looked to the lady seated at the foot of my bed. She too was crying. Please don't cry. I took her hand and smiled at her. You're all right now. Please don't cry. Elizabeth, honey, the nurse said. Can you hear me? I looked up at the nurse. Why are the women crying? It's the meds, she said. It amplifies whatever feelings you have before the procedure. Before the procedure. I thought back. Before the procedure, I had been smiling. I had my cry with one of the nurses, told her why I had to abort the baby. The talk had helped. He would have radiation poisoning, I had said. Oh, she scrunched up her face like she cared. You have to abort this, sweetie. I know. I cried, and ten minutes later I was talking to the doctor about kiwi birds. You allergic to anything? Yes, I said. Men, stupidity, and kiwi. Kiwi? Like the bird or the fruit? Fruit, I answered. There's a kiwi bird? Yep, he said. I want you to count down from ten. Ten, nine, eight. I was gone. I had fallen asleep feeling relieved. I had my cry. But these women? They should have been allowed to cry. I stood and made my rounds, taking the time to hug each one. Never mind the fact that I was in a hospital gown and the pad holding all the blood was slipping from between my legs. I had to hug them. Had to comfort. Over and over, I said, you'll be okay. Please don't cry. It's all right now. Each gave me a smile and called me an angel. I smiled, hugged them, and squeezed their hands. I think that was the day I decided to smile and compliment. It did so much to ease their hearts. They smiled back and some stopped crying. They called me angel. With a bag of chips ahoy, I was escorted back to a closet and reunited with my clothes. Ten minutes later, I was back in the car with Scott. The entire thing took two hours. How can you eat those? He asked as I buckled, buckled myself in. I looked up with the chips ahoy between my lips. He didn't allow me to eat processed foods, and I had lived without chips ahoy for nearly three years. The nurses had given each of us a bag to help stabilize our blood sugar from the blood loss. I braced for the scolding and ate my cookie. I had an incessant cramp in my stomach. I was exhausted. I wanted to go home. Of all the political views, of all the religious and ethical views, 
but I would never develop an opinion on abortion. I felt I didn't have that right, not after what I did. I smiled. No, I tasted that lie as I spoke it, I said. I was afraid for what I would learn about myself if ever I attempted to form an opinion about abortion. To this day, I don't have one. I won't comment. Do I regret it? Yes. Were there other options? Yes. Did he make me do it? Yes. Not one part of my mind or body wanted to go through with that, and I had made it very clear to him that I did not want an abortion. But you signed the papers, William said. I had no choice. He didn't hold a gun to your head? No, I agreed. He didn't. He only held my future in his hands. He was inside my head, holding my heart hostage. I thought I had no choice, and he made sure I believed that. If you had it to do over again, William asked. I laughed and shook my head. If I had it to do over again, I never would have slept with him to begin with, I said. Women who abort? I stopped talking. Women, w William wasn't asking. He really didn't seem to sit in judgment of me. This was my own guilt. I was dealing with, and it was time I dealt with it. Who am I to judge the choices? Their lifestyle, I said. Who am I to determine if their choices were right or wrong? I would be no different than those women in the front of the clinic shoving flyers in my face. They didn't know. I didn't want to be there. If they had taken me by the arm and said you had other choices, then maybe I would have listened to them. But to call me a murderer while I walked to the execution platform? There were one more enemy out to get me that day. William politely listened, and I nodded as he let me talk. I will say this, I said. I will never forgive him for the abortion. I would never forget what he took from me, what he did to me. That day, he turned me into something I never wanted to be, a woman who aborts her own child.